Hi, welcome to another episode of McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy. As always, you can contact me with any questions you have or suggestions for videos on McClutchyMaths at yahoo.com. This particular video is an introduction to graphs and networks. It's part of Unit 4 of Year 12 General Maths in Queensland. There'll be some more videos to follow later on using matrices, networks and graphs in a number of different ways according to Unit 4. So let's get started with this brief introduction. First, you would recall from grade 11 that a matrix has a specific order that we stated in. It's rows first, columns second. So when we're stating that, this is an example here of a four by four. There are four rows and four columns. So we call that a four by four. You'll also recall that there are different kinds of matrices. One is a row matrix. It has one row. And surprise, surprise, a column matrix has one column. So here are some examples of what they would look like. Each entry inside the matrix is called an element and they are named in a specific way. Firstly, we read from rows and then from columns. So E34 would be element 34 from the third row and the fourth column. So it's very important that we're naming our elements in our matrix correctly. Now we also looked in grade 11 at adjacency matrices. They are a special kind of matrix that represent connections between objects. And each number in the matrix represents the number of connections. So in this particular graph that's shown on the left, you know, these could be towns and roads that connect the towns. You notice that between a road, um, town A and town B, there are two roads that run in parallel to one another. And so this would be represented in the matrix as um, the number two. Obviously, between a town A and itself, well, you can't go anywhere, so that would be represented by zero. And between town A and C, for example, there's only one connection. So we represent an adjacent C matrix by showing the number of connections between two different objects. Now, an adjacent C matrix is always going to be a square matrix that will have the same number of rows as it will have columns. There is always symmetry around your leading diagonal, and that's because when you've got A and A, on the side, those ones have no connection between each other. And that's the same with B and B, C and C and C. They've all got zero connections because you are not driving anywhere when you're leaving, when you're within your own town, for example. Any non-zero values can also represent loops. So for example, um, I've got from C to D, there's two ways to go there. So that's going to be a loop and um, that would be a non-zero value. Any rows that are all zeros indicate that there is an isolated vertex. We're going to talk a little bit more in a moment about what a vertex is. But if you notice here on this particular diagram, I've got point B and it sits away and it doesn't connect to A, C or D. So therefore, it's got zero connections in that particular row. Same happens in the columns as well. So now I'm going to introduce you to some new vocabulary around graphs and networks for Year 12. Firstly, we've got something called a graph or a network. And that's a series of points and lines that we use to represent those connections in a number of different settings. It might not just be towns and roads, but all sorts of different ways of connecting things together. So the graph is shown on the right and the matrix is shown on the left. We've got things called edges and vertices. Now the edges are the joining lines between the two points and we can also call those arcs. It really depends on what textbook you're using. So that's an edge. And a vertice is also called a node, and they are the dots or the points that represent the different items that are being connected to one another. So here's an example of a vertex. We've got five vertices on this particular graph. Now, edges could be drawn as straight lines. They can also be drawn as curves. It just depends on um, what you're trying to represent. Obviously, straight lines sometimes are a bit neater. You can do it with a ruler. But sometimes you need to draw curved edges, particularly where you've got um, two towns, for example, that are um, separated by more than one road. Like in this particular example, we've got on the left-hand side, D and B. Um, if you were to draw only straight lines in this graph, then there would be two lines overlapping one another, and that wouldn't make any sense. So sometimes you can use um, curves for edges. We've also got something called adjacent vertices. These are two vertices. Remember, a vertex is a point, and they are joined together by an edge. So, for example, in this diagram, A and C are adjacent vertices. They're living next door to each other. They're joined by that edge. 
And also A is also adjacent to D, it's also adjacent to B because they are the three points that join to point A. We have something called a simple graph or a network. And this is where every pair of vertices is connected by only one edge and there are no loops or parallel edges. Um, so you notice this is an example of a simple graph. We've got no double towns being doubled up with two roads going between the same two towns. A complete graph is one where every vertex is connected to every other vertex. And this one here is also a simple graph because you notice there's no loops as well. So you can have um, terminology where you've got one or two descriptions will apply to the same graph or network. In a connected graph or network, it is possible to reach every vertex by moving along the edges. But in a disconnected graph or network, it's not possible to reach every other vertex by moving along the edges. And this is an example because there is no way that you can join from point D to point C. They are completely separated. So they're called a disconnected network. We've talked a little bit about loops and parallel edges before, and this is more than one way to travel between two vertices. And we've got two loops in this diagram, one between A and B and one between B and D. Now, a directed graph or network is one where you must move around the network in a specified direction. And usually this is shown by little arrows. So you can see on this particular diagram, we've got at point A, you can only leave point A going to point F, D or B. And you can never go in the opposite direction back to point A again. So we, another word for this is a digraph, and that just means a directed graph. If there's no arrows, it's an undirected graph. And all of the previous networks that I've shown you in the previous slides were all undirected graphs. We can also have something called a subgraph. And this is where there are parts of another graph, but it's missing some of the vertices or edges. And I know this is a bit of a blurry diagram. I apologize for that. But on the left, you can see a picture of a graph. And then part of that graph is missing for the subgraph because that's just focusing on what's going on in those four points. That are on that subgraph. And we also have something called a bipartite graph. This is where the vertices can be split into two distinct groups and every edge joins one group to the other group. So in this example we have some people on the left hand side and some subjects that they study in science on the right hand side. And it looks like most of these students with the exception of, Ch of Chava are all studying two different sciences. Now you'll notice that there's no um, subject studying a subject or a person studying a person. The connections are purely from left to right. Now we have something in our vocabulary called the degree of a vertex. And this is something important that you need to learn. The number of edges that directly connect that vertex is the degree of the vertex. So for example, in this particular diagram on the right hand side, um, point A, that particular vertex, has a degree of two because there are two edges coming out from it, an edge going to C and an edge going to E. If you look at point E, the degree of E is three because it's got three edges coming out of it, one to D, one to A and one to C. And the way we write the degree of the vertex is with the abbreviated form DEG brackets A equals two. Now, a loop in a vertex has a degree of 2, and this only works for your undirected graph. So in this case, the degree of B, well, it's got 2 going out to point A and 2 going out to point D. So it has a degree of 4 altogether. So this is something to be aware of. Those loops are 2 out and back again. Now, fun fact, the degree of a vertex, um, the total number of edges will always be half the sum of the degrees in a completed graph. So if we look at the degrees of each of these points, point A has three lines coming out from it. Uh, point C has three lines coming out. Point D has three. Point B has five. Just have a little count of that. It's got the two loops plus the other line going out to point C. Now, if I was to add all of these degrees together, five plus three plus um, three plus three equals 14. Now, if I count the number of edges I've got, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, well, the degrees is double the number of edges that I've got. So that's a fun fact that you need to remember. You might even be asked to prove it. Now, a loop adds two degrees 
to a vertex. So if you notice down here in this particular diagram, we've got a few different loops going on. We've also got a loop at Birdsville. It's not a parallel edge in this case. It's just a road that leads to nowhere and heads back to Birdsville again. The degree of that circle is going to be two as well. So all of the other um, different vertices in this particular diagram have varying amounts. Um, Baduri and Wendura, they have a degree of four because they've got the loop coming out as well as the other numbers. But then Birdsville at the bottom has two parallel edges coming out, one to Baduri and the other two go out to Windura, and then it's got that little loop at the bottom, the circle, that adds another two. And if we add all those up together, we end up with 24. So I'm going to take you through a couple of little worked examples. In worked example one, we need to construct an adjacency matrix for the graph shown. Now, step one is I'm going to count how many vertices I have. A, B, C, and D gives me four vertices. So that means that I'm going to need four rows and four columns. It's going to be a four by four matrix. So the next step is I'm going to draw my headings for a four by four matrix. So I'm going to put the little parentheses around the outside and put A, B, C, D in a column as well as in a row. And now I know that adjacency matrix, my lead adjacency matrices, my leading diagonals are going to be all zero. So I can simply fill in that leading diagonal from A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. They will all be zeros. And now it's time to fill in the remaining spaces, remembering to line everything up perfectly. So I'm going to count the number of edges between the different vertices. So for example, from A to um, C, there is one way that I can get there. So if you notice on this adjacency matrix, it's got the number one represented for AC as well as for CA. If I think about going from town A to town B, there are two ways I can get there, so that's why in the adjacency matrix it's represented with the number two. That's all we have time for today. I'll be creating some more videos on graphs and networks in the coming weeks. Do stay tuned. Thanks for listening.